on the other call. You're kidding, are there? Okay, I'll wait and let everybody come over. And I'll pull up my handy dandy. Well, now you know who's paying attention. Go ahead, what? Now you know who's paying attention. Exactly. Um, here's an example right here of a test question. Boop. Right there. Right okay. Way. We can't, we can't see anything. Question. What? Can't see anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm not presenting. Do dork. Hold on a second. All right, let me know if you can see my doc cam. Yep. Okay, so this is a prime example. Now that I've given you some kind of some kind of exposure to a graph, if I approach three from the left and right, what is my limit? Two. That's it. Now make sure you understand that I could say limit as X approaches three from the right. That's what that means. Or I could say limit as X approaches three from the what? From the left. Now, that's, now you need to make a note of this because some of you I've never seen that before. I don't know if you've seen it before or not. I'm just saying some some people may not have seen that before. I went and bought some groceries. I bought some more paper. I bought some. I bought me two whiteboards. Whoa! I'll tell you what, bud. I'm gonna get the poster. And I bought. Hey, big spender. Yeah, I bought some uh, highlighters, and I bought some neon. Sharpies. Look at this guy here being able to afford highlighters and sharpies. I tell you what, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna get some posters going here. It's that darn I'm stimulus. I know Tri County Tech. Yep, stimulus check. I went and spent that gym stimulus check. Oh. Somebody got electrocuted. All right. So that's that's a test. That's an example right there of a test question. I, I'm not going to. I, I probably will be a little bit more uh, aggressive with the algebraic equations rather than the rather than the test questions. Okay. Um, here's a test question or a good homework question that I'm going to cover up the. We'll let you draw it first. So go ahead and draw that question or draw that graph. I'm going to let you give you a second to draw it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just, you know, in the general vicinity of the numbers. Because I'll be honest with you. You have a lot of people that have had algebra before. When they see these limits, they don't have a clue. Um, and because they've never seen them before. And you have to keep thinking of the stepping toward the wall. And each step toward the wall, you take half the previous step. And you have to think about that. Okay, now, as far as the two limits equal in each other, that's a little bit of theory. And yes, I got to make sure that you understand that. Are you going to fail calculus if you don't understand if four doesn't equal three? No, you're not going to fail calculus. But you need to understand the limit theory of half a step, half a step, half a step, getting within a hairline of touching the number on the x-axis. You have to understand that. And that's what this is for. I'm not really concerned whether you can recite mass, uh, uh, limit theory in, a, in an oral exam. I don't really, I don't know. All I care about is that you understand the process of taking half a step, half a step, half a step, and get within a hairline of X is equal to three. And what's happening as you approach a hairline of X is equal to three, 
what what Y is doing. That's all I care about. So you on a test of 20 questions, you probably talking about eight to 10 questions from limits. The other is going to come from review or whatever is in this unit. I don't know. I got to look over and see, but uh, I'm going I'm probably going to harp on the limits and the review on the unit one test. And then I'll probably start with the derivatives and the quote, you know, the difference quotient, that kind of stuff that we went over. And where it says on your outline, I think it says chapter three. I think I'll just put all of three together because that's where we actually get into the derivatives. So don't do 3.1 and 3.2 homework. I think somebody look on your outline. Do they have 3.1 and 3.2 in unit one? Okay. Thank you for helping me out. I'll let you know. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Yeah. Print it today. It should have been printed a week ago, but that's okay. All right. So what is happening if I tell you to plug in zero? Then I get negative two. I'm sorry. I get positive two. So what is the limit as X approaches two? In this case, it's going to be the same thing. Limit as X approaches two, I mean, X approaches zero is two. Well, what about what is F of negative two? Well, F of negative two is that dot right there because that's the only thing that's inclusive of negative two. Now, you've got to understand what inclusive means. Inclusive means that I take negative two and I plug it into the function. What's the outcome of me taking negative two and plugging it into the function? The only thing that gives you a solid dot is that right there. Because this is non-inclusive. Inclusive, sorry. This right here is non-inclusive. And the only thing that you can apply to non-inclusive is getting as close to it as possible. So here is saying, okay, if I want to get close to negative two as possible, what am I going to touch? I'm going to get, I'm not touch. What am I going to get close to? I'm going to get to y is equal to one. I'm going to get close to y is equal to one. So both of these you've got, and I'm going to write this in a, in a very, very fluorescent pink. Oof. I know I'm getting I'm getting down and dirty. Exact. Oops, I can't spell. Inclusive. Exact. Inclusive. And when you say inclusive, you're talking about a solid what? Dot. Solid dot. I'm going to take a very, very, I don't know, lost all my, here's my, here's my very, very fluorescent orange. I had to put the ceiling fan on, that gum humid, all of that gum typhoon we're having. Okay. And I got about 50 acres of hay on the ground. Okay, here, a limit. What is depicted by a limit? An open circle or a closed circle? A closed circle. So that means approaching slash exclusive. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I know there's somebody out there that's had algebra and blah, 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 and you've got a taste of limits and you're going, I have no idea what the hell a limit is. Okay? A limit is approaching. 
an evaluation is inclusive. That's the difference between the two. So all you have to do is to be able to read it on a graph. What's happened as limit approaches two? What's happening on the left and the right as X approaches two? What's happening? Somebody give me a Y. You can't. Yeah. It's not. Now, you can either say your limit is infinity. Or you can say the limit does not exist. It all depends on what the question asks. You may have a question on the homework and it may say, does the limit exist? Does the limit exist? Limit as X approaches to of F of X. Then you would say does not exist because the questions say, does the limit exist? Now, what if they say equals and then they just give you a blank? then you might want to put infinity because they don't have exist or not in the definition. So you might want to put the question will have the right answer to it. I'm just telling you sometimes the question may be a little vague. And if it goes to infinity, you would put infinity. And if it has exist or does not exist in the directions, then you would put does not exist because it has infinity in, in it or the two limits does not equal, then it would be does not exist. F of four, exact or limit? Exact. Exact, so that means it's going to equal something. So F of four is closed dot at one. Why didn't I include this one? Because that's a limit. A limit is closed open circle. Exact is, is a uh, closed circle, but you could have a closed circle as this one right here. You could have a limit approaching that circle, but you can't have an evaluation give you an open circle. And I have two more questions for you. Give me, okay, no, I've already went over that with the right here. Well, I, uh, if you go over there, what is happening when you do the limit of f of x as x approaches negative four? I'm sorry. As, a, as x approaches four from the left, your, your, your limit is one. What is x approach, what is, what is y approaching as X approaches four from the right, it's approaching, it's supposed to be four, but five. It's really five. I think it's five. Do these limits equal each other? Nope. Therefore, the limit what? Does not exist. Write this down. The limit does not exist at infinity or not equal. Now, I'm going to jump from two types of graphing questions. I'm going to jump over to algebra. <clears throat> yeah, let's just quit. Actually, I like algebra over graphing. So I'm going to use my handy dandy whiteboard because I want to use it today. I want to be like those people on YouTube. Get your money's worth. Uh, Get your money's worth. I don't know. Y'all are getting y'all's money's worth. Y'all not getting posters, though. I'm sorry. I'm not being able to do the posters like the Tri-County Tech wants us to do. Oh. Now, these pens, I haven't quite found the right pens. These pens kind of write real thin. So don't bitch, because I know some of y'all will. I'm not going to mention no names. But limit as x approaches in zero, sorry, of three over 
2x squared, that's not a parenthesis, just erase it. Ooh. x squared minus 4x plus 1. So what do you do here? Well, these type problems, when it's really straightforward, they give you a number here. Plug and what? Chug. Chug. Plug and chug. You're talking about two or three problems on the test. I'll ask you like this. So three over two zero squared minus four times zero plus one. That goes to zero. And I got three over one, which is equal to three. So whatever this function looks like, it could be a parabola, it could be whatever, I don't know. But whatever this function looks like, well, it's x squared, so it's going to be a volcano. So it's going to look something like, I have no idea what it looks like, but it's going to look something like this. And as x approaches zero, so it must cross, sorry, it must cross like right there. So what is... As X approaches zero from the left and the right, what is Y approaching? Three. Three. Good job. So that would be your graphical representation. You could graph this on a on a gra gra graphing calculator. Graph this right here and do a trace at zero and see what you get for Y. It'd be like 2.9999 or something like that. Oh, in this case, it will be three. Sorry. Now, oh, I'm just curious, and I'm going to ask this because, oh, did y'all see the raise your hand feature? Oh, yeah, we did that yesterday. Um, I'm going to go to conversation because I, I see somebody has okay 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 let me ask you a question I'm trying to see how to phrase this question from I tell you what just give me just give me a one word explanation of your outlook toward limits before today so I've not finished yet. Just give me in your in the in the a one word uh, description of your ability to do limits. Okay, I got one limited and one neutral. Decent. No sucks. <laughs> There's a five. Somebody remember my one, five, and ten. Non existent. Yeah, got two A's. All right. Very good. Okay. Non existent. So I'm getting a few people that's giving me a one and a three and a five. And I got a few tens and a few thumbs up. So that's good. Usually it's about half and half. Some people really suck at them. And that's why I'm trying to go, you know, at a, at a kind of a slow pace here. But anyway, the next question let's do the limit. Got to use my dish rag here. I'm sorry, my dish towel. Some of y'all don't know what a dish rag is. Y'all are not sophisticated. Limit as X, like a spigot. As X approaches one half, or Clemson with a P. Oh, you get it now? Just never done it before. Wow. Okay, 4X minus 2 over 6x squared plus x minus 2. All right, do that one. And this is going to open up a rule that I'm going to use my red Expo white marker.
Now, some of you probably plugged it in and got zero over zero. And said, so, well, heck, that's undefined. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get, let you in on a little secret. In calculus, nothing is that what? Easy. Nothing is that easy. So when you get something like this, the first thing you think of is we have to what? We have to factor. So go ahead and factor. When you get zero in the denominator, do y'all remember me telling y'all about rationalizing the denominator? When you get zero in the denominator, that means that's not the answer. That means you've got to go further. So we got to factor. So what can we do up top? Take a two out. We can take a two out. And the bottom, we'll just sit there and stare at it because it's reverse FOIL, and we don't know how to do that, do we? Let's see. That's going to be negative 2 and 3x. I'm thinking out loud. So that's supposed to be a 2x. 2x minus 1. And 3x plus 2. Somebody check me. Oh, yeah, I forgot that's reverse full, and y'all don't know how to do that. So what happens to the 2x minus 1s? They cancel. Now, is that what's supposed to happen? Yes. When you cancel with limits, something's going to happen. And that's going to leave you, I'm going to put this in green, because that means it will work now. I'm going to get limit as x approaches 1 half of 2 over 3x plus 2. And somebody crank that out. Well, I'll go ahead and crank it out. I got forced. <laughs> that means you know how to do this. 4 over 7. Now, I guarantee you, there are some people in here that have always got to that 0 over 0, and they would go, they would go, well, what am I supposed to do? It does not exist. They didn't know what to do. What about a negative limit? Yeah, you could have a negative limit. Just, you know, if you have a, you know, you could have a, I'm trying to think, you could have a, no, most of, well, yeah, you could have a negative limit. Just most of the ones that I've given you, I'll see if I can find you a negative limit, but you could have one. Um, it's just whatever Y is. Um, yeah, you could have a negative limit. You could plug in. In fact, I've got a example of plugging in the negative infinity. So, but the main thing is, whatever you plug in, if you get a negative four sevenths, then that's your negative. It's negative. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to draw this on a. I'm just going to draw a function here on a graph. As x approaches zero, what is your limit? Well, this looks like negative two. So yeah, you could have a you could have a negative two limit. Is that what you're asking, Miss Patel? Or are you asking can you plug in a negative number? You can do both. You could plug in uh, x as a uh, limit as x approaches negative two, uh, two x plus one. What's negative 2 times 2? 4. Negative 4 plus 1? 3. 
So you could play, you could either get a negative limit, or you could, you know, in that case, it came out to be negative three. You could plug in a negative number. Does that help you out, Miss Patel? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next type. Now here you had two types. You had a plug and chug, and you had a factor. Now, do you remember me telling you if you sucked at the reverse FOIL and the shortcuts, you were going to have a problem in limits? Do you remember me telling you that? Yes. Okay, the reason I said that was because, oh, well, I, I'll tell you what, who in, who in the class, just, just tell me with a quick yes or no, who in here, now I'm not talking about plays at it. I play at a guitar and I play at golf. I'm not good at it. But who in here can play a musical instrument? Just say yeah, I can. yes or no. Yes. I knew you didn't, Miss Sterling, because you know that winners play musical instruments. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we got a few. Okay, I'm gonna pick on Miss Gobadi. Miss Gobadi and Miss Hart. I'm gonna pick on two of y'all. Okay. I would say something very sexist here, but, you know, I will say that. That's one of the reasons I'm divorced. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, the the whole point is Miss Hart and Miss... Is there some things that you can do, Miss Hart and Miss uh, Gabadi? Are there some things that you can do when playing an instrument that's not technically correct, but you do it because... You've either practiced it that way or it's shorter or quicker to do it that way. Yeah. Okay, give me an example. Um, will you put me on the spot? I have to think for a second. Okay. okay what, what instrument do you play? I play the flute. Oh, okay. me too. <laughs> I'm not dumb. Miss I'm Gabadi, just do you play the flute too? Yeah. No, that's who who spoke first. I don't know what that's. I'm on the spot about it too. I'm very confused. Well, let me ask you this: placement of fingers. Yeah. Do you place your fingers exactly where you're supposed to? Yes. Mm -hmm. are just <laughs> Ways to do it. I'm it's not really a guitar, so you kind of have to. <laughs> okay, you have to. Okay. You pick well, two. Well, is there any other things that y'all can think of that may be that you say when you're pulling? When you when you're doing a when you're doing a piece of music, is there something that you know when you see it and you go, oh God, I gotta prepare for this? When you're yeah. playing, yeah. Okay, when you're looking at certain notes or you're looking at certain pieces of music, you're playing and you're playing, and I'm acting like I'm doing a flute right now, which <laughs> I have no idea. And you're playing and you sit there and you're looking at those notes and you say, oh God, I see something that I don't like. But I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. How do you get to that point when playing a musical instrument? How do you get to the point to where you can actually tell when bad stuff is coming? Like Doing it. it and like experiencing it. I'm sorry, y'all mumbling. I don't. I, I don't hear you mumbling. How much it sucks by doing it. <laughs> yeah, trying okay, to do it. What? Past trying to do it. Yeah. Okay, you're saying by doing it. I think you said. By experience, what what word can we, we can we can we combine with experience and doing it over and over? What word is that? Practice. Practice. Oh my gosh, what a concept! <laughs> Practice. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, when you're talking about the difference between this problem and this problem, how is the only way? Will you be quiet, Mr. O'Quinn? <laughs> what is the only way that you can tell between the two? By practice. Okay? <laughs> Miss, Mr. Sterling, <laughs> you ever run out of comments? And Mr. And, and Mr. O'Quinn just hurt my feelings, so I'm offended. There was a point buried in there somewhere. We just had to find it. <laughs> Just, that's all right. You know, Mr. O'Quinn, when you fail this class, I don't want you to cry, okay? Don't worry, I won't fail it. Oh, because I have the power, okay? 
I have the file. What's the really long example? What? <laughs> that was a really long example. Okay. Fine. I'm sorry. Fine. It's just not Fine. a good joke unless you make somebody snort. I tell you what. Three snorts is equal to pee in pants. All right. Limit. As X approaches zero, uh-oh, X approaches zero, of one minus the square root of X over one minus X. Now, at this point, you should just go ahead and skip the question. Why? It's got a radical, you. It's got a radical in it, and we don't do radicals just like we don't do fractions, so you should skip this one. No, you should plug in what? Chug. I give that question on the test and people will skip it. <laughs> so again, actually what I should have done, Mr. O'Quinn, since you made me feel insecure about myself, um, okay. I'm gonna, that's all right. Tomorrow I'll take my truck and I'll get smokestacks put on it and it'll make my life a whole lot better. Okay. The reason I, I should have talked about a piano because sometimes, or a guitar, because F on a guitar, some people can't do F, so they do another configuration of their fingers to do F. Same thing with do playing a piano. Sometimes a, a person can't reach a certain, you know, finger placement, so they cheat. And the only way that people know how to do that is by practice. Okay. Um, uh, just forget it. All right. Limit as X approaches one from the right of one minus square root of X over one minus X. Now I'm going to let you do this one. What are you saying exactly for, Miss Gobadi? Are you agreeing? Oh, okay. I thought, yeah, I've managed to pick probably the only two flute players in the class. Yeah. I buy lottery tickets every day. It doesn't do any good. Miss Sterling, will you just stop talking? I tell you what, there's always, always remember in life, there's always one. So, what do you find out? Oh, this is easy. It doesn't exist, right? Because zero is in the denominator. No. So, what do you do? Would we factor out? Can you rationalize oh. the numerator? Rash, who said that? Anderson. Mr. Anderson, you are gifted and talented, sir. Yes. Is that right? Rationalize the numerator. Cool. You can't factor, so you got to rationalize the numerator. So I'm going to multiply. I'm going to take my handy dandy fluorescent pink, and I'm going to multiply by one plus the square root of x over one plus the square root of x. Now the reason I the reason I picked rationalizing, somebody said factor. Who said factor? I did, Davis. Okay. The reason I called you factoring is your other alternative, but can you factor? No. So if you can't factor, your second best bet is to do the conjugate. Mr. Harrison, why you give up? Why are you giving up, Mr. Harrison? Okay, he's not talking to me. Mr. Harrison, you there? <laughs> oh, you hate rationalizing. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But, 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 Mr. Harrison, there's things in life that we hate, but we have to keep doing them. I have to teach this class, you know. I really do hate it. But I, I, have, I to hate have to it. change dirty diapers. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I've been through that twice. Thank you very much. All right, so we got, what have we got right here? Oh my goodness, we got shortcut number three. And on the bottom, we basically have the reverse FOIL. So here, we're going to get 1 squared minus square root of x squared. And on the bottom, we're going to get 1 minus x, parentheses, 1 plus the square root of x. And I really don't care. If you want to put that in a trinomial, you can. But I'm going to take this down one more step. And I'm going to get 1 minus x over 1 minus x. Oh, my Lord, look up there. 1 plus the square root of x. Somebody tell me, what do we do with those 1 minus x's? Make them disappear. You make them disappear. They cancel each other out. And you get limit as x approaches one, and in this case, the, the positive and the negative really are more, more beneficial on the, the graphs than they are on algebra because it's just one. So that's going to be one over one plus the square root of x, and that's going to be one over one plus one, which is what? One minus one. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah. 1 plus the square root of 1, which is 1. So. Yeah, be 1 over 1, well, 1 over 2. All right? <coughs> yeah, I was looking over my... I didn't do the rest of it. I want to make sure I had the right answer. So that's one half. So here, you thought it was going to be complicated, but once you did the shortcut number three, you saw that it canceled. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, if you really put forth the effort and work, work, Work hard and practice, you'll get good at these. If you don't work hard and practice, you're going to what? Drop out. There you go. Good job. Or do y'all want me to blow sunshine? Which one y'all want me to do? Tell you the truth or, or give everybody a trophy? Which one is it? D -d 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 Drop out. Yeah. Go cry in a corner. That's a good one. I like that one. You can be Cinderella. I'm in my own little world. I know I was in Cinderella with my dang, dang old daughter. All right. Limit. First off, over time. Second off, did you get a chance to look at the logarithm problem? Oh, time? okay. Are we over time? About two minutes. Okay. We'll, we'll stop there. Okay. Second, uh, I have two emails out. And one of them is the logarithm, and they haven't emailed me back. The second one is they emailed me back on that other equation, but they're saying that the x squared is correct. And I told them, I said, I don't believe the x squared is correct. I believe it cancels, and I did it over. So I'm waiting on those two. I'm still waiting on them. I'll let you know when I get. I do know that I've got a couple of questions to go over today, and I will go over them tomorrow. I wanted to get through the limits. And I hadn't got through the limits. I still got, I still got about two or three more pages. So we'll finish limits tomorrow. Okay, but you should be able to start working on limits today. Okay, I'm gonna cut off the recording right now so I can take the roll because I have no idea what time it is right now. It is 4:30. Okay. Thank you for the time management. Thanks. Um, so I'm gonna hit the record. Stop recording and